Jacoby Johnson was a Florida-born native hailing from Leesburg, Florida. The option QB would also double on defense on known passing downs at free safety. And then at 6 feet 198 pounds, Johnson was best known for his speed. Wanting to stay in Florida, he already had his three college choices made up, but he had to finish out his senior season first where he led Leesburg into the playoffs. In his first playoff game, Johnson would find Craig Ostringer who would do the rest taking the ball into Pinellas Park territory. The following play, he would find his number one target, Dan Wynn, who would go for 24 yards. Just one play later, him and Wynn would hook up yet again, but this time for six as he put Leesburg on top. Knowing that Pinellas Park needed to score, Johnson would play the entire defensive drive that would end up only lasting one play as his running mate at safety would end up with a pick that would put Johnson right back on the field, starting at the goal line. Just one play after the turnover, Johnson would do the rest with a read option touchdown, trucking a defender for an easy touchdown. With Leesburg already up 14, Johnson would take the field again for his third drive, starting it off with a read option that would go for 10 yards. On the next play, Johnson would hook up with Maurice Bennett for a 43 yard reception as he took the ball inside the 20. Just like most of the season, Leesburg was looking to run away with it as he hooked up with Wynn for the second time on the day. Not needing to play another snap as the defense handled that business, Johnson would sit out the remainder of the game and they would move on to the next round of the playoffs. Johnson would finish with 235 yards, 74 rushing yards, and four total touchdowns. He also had one tackle. In the next round of the playoffs, Johnson would get the drive started with a scramble, taking the ball up near the 45. The next play, he would find his number one target who had a big day last week, and then win, who would get the ball near the red zone before he was tackled near the 10. After that 42-yard connection, Johnson would do the rest, ending the drive on the ground the same way it started, with a walk-in touchdown. Up 7-0, they had a short field after the defense forced a turnover, and he would hook up with Alex Howell putting the Leesburg Tiger up two scores. Up 21 late in the second quarter, Johnson would evade a sack, activate a scramble drill where he would hook up with Thin Wynn yet again. Wynn would do the rest after breaking a tackle and walking up the sideline. No one could catch him. Just to put the icing on the cake, already up 35-0, Johnson would hook up with Craig Ostringer again, putting him near the goal line. A play later, the drive would end when Johnson would take off yet again and walk into the end zone. This would be the final drive on the game for Johnson as they would sit out the remainder of the fourth quarter. After making it to the state championship, Johnson would hook up with Wynn yet again as the duo couldn't be stopped during the playoffs. A couple plays later, Johnson would sit in the pocket like a statue and find Alex Howell for an easy score over the middle. Already up 14-0, he was looking to put Rivera Beach away as he hooked up with Wise Becker, who would take the ball inside the 15. Later in the drive, Johnson would finish it on the ground with a two-yard rushing touchdown. Stepping back in the pocket, Johnson was surveying the field and he decided to scramble yet again. This time he would pick up first down yardage, taking it near the goal line. Johnson and Leesburg would steamroll Rivera Beach and they would become the state champs with ease. After finishing the game with over 500 total yards and six touchdowns, he also had three tackles as well, and he knew it was time to move on to college. Not a tough decision at all. Johnson already knew he was going to Florida Atlantic. He first picked number 18, but during his sophomore season, he would change to number six. On his first practice of his sophomore season, Johnson would make himself known as a threat to the starting job as he hooked up with Kelvin Dean Jr. His decision making during the practice was just beautiful as he took off and used his legs here on his rushing touchdown that pretty much solidified himself as a starter. Johnson's best ball of the day came on a strike to Kelvin Dean Jr. in the corner of the end zone where he waited his time in the pocket as long as he could and delivered a beautiful strike. However, Johnson wouldn't end up starting until week four versus Rice after an injury to the starting quarterback. During his first drive, he leaned on Marvin Scott to start and running back early with a 21-yard run and then an eight-yard completion. Johnson would then take matters into his own hand during the scramble drill. He would hit LeJonte Wester who would take the ball all the way near the five. Just one play later, Johnson would have his first career touchdown in college as he took an eight yard touchdown run untouched into the end zone. Up 14-7, Johnson looked to continue his success as he hooked up with Marvin Scott on the screen play for seven yards. He would then do what he did best in the read option, taking this ball all the way down to the Rice logo near midfield. With 53 seconds left, Johnson was near perfect on his first two minute drill where he would hook up with TJ Young who would take a big hit but hang on. But one play after that, Jamal Edron was on the board as the Owls took a 21-7 lead. Late in the fourth quarter, Johnson was looking to put Rice away as he hooked up with Kelvin Dean Jr. for a first down. But on the next play, unfortunately on a read option, Johnson would have to exit the game on a shoulder injury after he took a big hit. The third string quarterback would come in and finish the game, so Johnson was credited with his first career win in college football. Jacoby wouldn't return until week nine after a bye week, but he got right back into the action hooking up with TJ Young for eight yards. Later in that drive, he would hook up with his number one target on the season, Jamal Edron, who would do the rest, taking his 55-yard touchdown into the end zone. 
Johnson would do a scramble drill and hook up with LeJonte Wester on third and 10 using a check down. A 15 yard face mask was tacked on and the drive continued. He would then hand off to LeJonte Wester who would walk in untouched for a touchdown. Later in the second quarter trying to get another two minute drill going, Johnson would use his legs to get a first down on a 15 yard carry. With 56 seconds left, Jacoby was in the pocket and he would find Carter Boltwright who would take the ball into plus territory near the Auburn 45. And just one play later, he would hook up with Jamal Edron yet again, almost uncovered into the end zone for a 51 yard strike. Later in the quarter, Johnson was looking to capitalize off another short field as he hooked up with Kelvin Dean Jr. for a touchdown. Johnson would then throw a contested catch to Justin McKitton, who would do the rest getting the ball near the 45. Late in the third quarter, Johnson was looking ready to get another scramble drill when he peeped Kelvin Dean Jr. getting wide open in the end zone for a 38 yard strike. That would effectively put Auburn away. The following week, Johnson would face his first adversity where he had to come from behind versus Tulane. He would hook up with Carter Boltwright for nine yards to start the drive. With two minutes, 29 seconds left, he would find Kelvin Dean Jr. near midfield. Looking to cook as much time as possible, he would then dump off a screen to Marvin Scott who would pick up the first down with ease before stepping out of bounds. With a minute 50 left, Johnson would then evade the pocket, looking for somebody down the field, couldn't find anybody, so he would take off, take some ankles, and get the ball all the way inside the red zone. After the 22 yard carry, they cooked as much time as possible before Johnson would connect with LeJonte Wester for a touchdown to tie the ball game up. The offenses would trade field goals and then Tulane would add another field goal and Johnson knew it was his time to end this game once and for all. As the rain was pouring down, Johnson took a 13 yard carry for a first down. The following play, he would hook up with McKitton who would take the ball near the goal line. And with the game on the line, he put the ball inside his starting running back's hand, Marvin Scott who would take the three yard touchdown into the end zone to finally finish this game. After having success all season, Johnson led the Owls to the Central USA Championship game where he started off with the scramble drill with Marvin Scott who would then take the ball deep in the UTEP territory. After the 49 yard completion, Johnson would do the same yet again with the scramble drill after having time in the pocket, but this time he would find LeJonte Wester who would break a tackle and walk into the end zone. Johnson was looking to put the Owls up by two scores after UTEP couldn't respond. He would use his legs on his 30 yard scramble to get take the ball all the way into UTEP territory near the 40. After the 30 yard rush, he would hand off to Marvin Scott, who would take the ball all the way inside the 10. As Johnson couldn't keep his hands on the ball off the read option and Carter Boatwright had to save a touchdown. Late in the second quarter, Johnson had the Owls ready to strike yet again as he handed off to Marvin Scott as he would take the ball deep to the goal line. Just one play later, Marvin Scott was rewarded with an easy walk in touchdown. As the game was 14-7, Johnson would then hook up with Justin McKinton near midfield. The two minute drill was on with only a minute 51 left. Johnson would take a measly check down to Marvin Scott who would do the rest banging his way all the way into UTEP territory. With just under a minute 30 to go, Johnson would uncork a missile to Justin McKinton near the 15. The following play he would hook up with TJ Young for a touchdown, breaking the tie putting the Owls back on top. With three minutes remaining, down seven, Johnson was looking to tie the ball game up yet again where he hooked up with Justin McKinton off the short field. A play later, Johnson would exit the pocket and he would walk in for a touchdown tying the ball game up. In the pocket, Johnson had plenty of time with two minutes remaining. He would hook up with Carter Boltwright to take this ball near the 30. After that completion with a minute 50 left, Johnson would then find Marvin Scott who would do the rest and pick up a first down. A few plays later with 52 seconds remaining, Johnson would walk into the end zone leaving the UTEP offense 47 seconds to respond. After the Owls defense held, they were Central USA champions. The following week, they would have the AutoZone Liberty Bowl as they matched up with Mississippi State. Johnson would get started early with a contested ball to McKitton who would do the rest getting the ball near midfield. After the 27 yard completion, Johnson was ready to take a shot. He found a 6'6 tight end Carter Boltwright for a 57 yard strike to put the Owls on the board first. During the following job, trying to respond to Mississippi State's touchdown, he would hook up with Justin McKithen yet again. Seeing there was no QB spy, Johnson would take off, getting the ball near the 10-yard line with a 23-yard carry. The Owls, however, would need all four plays to get LeJonte Wester into the end zone, as on fourth and one, he would get the one-yard touchdown. The Owls would then fall behind two scores, but with 30 seconds left in the half, Johnson was ready to take that deficit down as he hooked up with Marvin Scott. With 24 seconds remaining, Johnson was in the pocket, which he would then exit and take the ball up the sideline where he had nothing but green grass getting the ball to the 25. One play later, he would hook up with Jamal Edgen who would walk in the end zone untouched, making this a three point game yet again. Late in the third quarter, as Mississippi State were failed to respond on their first drive of the second half, he would hook up with Kelvin Dean Jr. After that 18 yard completion, he would hook up with Dean yet again on a slant play, taking it all the way near the 15. Jacoby doing what he does best would cap off the drive after extending the play, 
he would find Jamal Edron for the second time on the day for a touchdown. The lead with the Owls yet again. With just 24 seconds left in the game, trailing by three, Johnson was looking to find TJ Young deep and they connected for a 52 yard bomb to take the lead. After throwing a laser down the field, Mississippi State could not respond and the Auto Zone Liberty Bowl belonged to the Atlantic Owls. Johnson would face his first ranked opponent at the start of his junior season when he went up against number nine Nebraska at Nebraska. He wanted to get started quick and he hooked up with his new starting tight end, Marquise Robinson, for a big gain all the way deep in the Nebraska territory. After the 32 yard reception, Johnson was looking to attack again where he would then exit the pocket and find Maul Edron who would take the ball near the five yard line. A few plays later, Johnson would walk into the end zone to put the Owls up on the board first. Nebraska didn't respond and Johnson knew it was his time to jump all over the unsuspecting team where he would find Jamal Edron down the sideline for another 51 yard touchdown reception. Nebraska would finally respond but it was a little too late. Johnson was ready to attack as he took his read option near the 10 yard line. One play later, he would hook up with Nikosi Perry for a two yard touchdown. Nebraska, however, would tie the ball game up, but Johnson was right back on the attack with the read option, taking his ball near the 30 yard line. A few plays later, Johnson would look to exit the pocket and he would hit a Patrick Mahomes-like underhand to Marquise Robinson, who would then pick up a first down. After the 14 yard completion, Johnson would give the ball to Jaquan Burton, who would walk in for a one yard touchdown. With three minutes left in the fourth quarter, Johnson was looking to put the nail in the coffin on Nebraska as he hooked up with Nikosi Perry who would take the ball up the sideline for a 52 yard reception. That drive would lead to a field goal and Nebraska would strike again, however it was too late. Johnson was in a winning formation. That following week, FAU was considered a ranked opponent at number 20 but had to go up against number one Alabama. As they headed down to Tuscaloosa it was a rainy day and Johnson would start it off hitting up Nikosi Perry on fourth and inches. Just one play later he would hook up with Kelvin Dean Jr for 27 yards. After the completion of Kelvin Dean, he would find Kelvin Dean yet again all the way down to the 10 as the Owls were looking to strike first in Tuscaloosa. A couple plays later, Nikosi Perry would have a walk-in touchdown. Alabama would strike within minutes and Johnson knew this game was going to be an offensive battle so he took off using his legs to get the ball near the 45. After the 37-yard carry, Johnson would exit the pocket and find Jamal Edron who would take a big hit at the SEC logo, but hang on. With three minutes and counting in the fourth quarter, Johnson would uncork an absolute dime to Kelvin Dean Jr. at the goal line. Kosey Perry would have another walk-in touchdown. As the game was knotted up 14-14 before half, Johnson was looking to put his team on his back as he found Kelvin Dean Jr. who broke a tackle and got the ball past midfield. After the 37-yard completion, Johnson would again be sacked at the 40, bringing up second and 11. On second and 11, he would get the yards right back, hooking up with Marquise Robinson. Later in the drive, Johnson would get his first touchdown of the day. Instead of pitching it, he would walk in for the touchdown, putting the Owls back on top. Later in the third quarter, Johnson would get Nikosi Perry involved yet again with a first down reception. And off a little play fake where everyone bit, Johnson would then uncork a dangerous ball to Justin McKinton who would hang on in the rain for a touchdown, breaking the tie yet again. After Alabama would then go on to tie the ball game up, Johnson would start his second drive off using his legs, getting the ball past the 50. On third and five, the game almost took an insane turn as Johnson was hit and fumbled the ball, but luckily it went out of bounds. He would, Johnson would then do a hurry up just to connect with Kelvin Dean Jr. to pick up the first down on fourth and five. And a play later, he would be in the end zone for the second time on the day. 35-35, with 19 seconds to go, Johnson was looking to put at least a field goal on the board as he got a first down. With 13 seconds remaining, he hit up Kelvin Dean Jr. on the sideline who got out of bounds. After hooking up with the Costa Perry, he would do the unthinkable and stay in bounds instead of stepping out of bounds, but that would then set up a Hail Mary. Johnson would then fake the scramble and realize he had four Atlantic Owls in the back of the end zone and Kelvin Dean would come away with the game ending touchdown. Johnson would go on to lead the Owls to an undefeated 12-0 record. They was up 14-7 but Johnson would change that with his connection to Kelvin Dean Jr. getting them all the way in the five. After the 40 yard bomb, Johnson would take off and find Kelvin Dean Jr. yet again for an eight yard touchdown reception. After the game was knotted up 14-14 late in the third quarter, UTSA was putting up a big fight and Johnson would find Kelvin Dean Jr. for the third time on the day. Dean Jr. was unstoppable in this game. With 42 seconds remaining, Johnson had plenty of time in the pocket and he uncorked a dime to Kelvin Dean Jr. on the sideline. Later in the drive with about 18 seconds remaining, Johnson would walk into the end zone. As the game was knotted up 21-21, Johnson was looking to finish this game off as he hooked up with Robert Outlaw for the first time on the day. Johnson was surveying the field, buying time, and he would hook up with Jaquan Burton. With two seconds remaining, the Owls would call timeout, but a field goal would be missed, 
and they were ahead to OT. Johnson was hit the direct snap and walking to the end zone, making it 28-21. After UTSA would score back-to-back -back times, Johnson would take matters into his own hands, scrambling and leaving the pocket, walking in for an untouched touchdown. The following drive in OT, Johnson would throw a dangerous pass to Nicosa Perry, who would come away with it somehow. They were then forced to go for the two-point conversion, where Johnson would do it himself and throw a lucky ball up into the air, and he found Jamal Edrin. A few plays later, Johnson would be walking into the end zone to seal the deal on this championship game. Johnson would go 20-30 for 333 yards and seven total touchdowns. He also set himself up for the national championship game versus Oregon. On his first play from scrimmage, he would hook up with McKitton, who nearly took it to the house. A few plays later, Johnson would uncork a laser to Austin Evans. As the drive continued, Johnson would exit the pocket and walk into the touchdown untouched. The defense would force a turnover, giving Johnson the short field, and he would make him pay with an easy touchdown. As Oregon finally responded, Johnson was ready to respond as well as he hooked up with Kelvin Dean Jr. near the sideline. At the top of the second quarter, he would find his number one man, Dean Jr., yet again. Facing first and goal, Johnson nearly sacked, would leave the pocket and scramble for a third rushing touchdown. The defense got a touchdown and then a stop. Johnson was ready to put the nail in the coffin on the outs as he hooked up with McKithen for 13 yards. A few plays later near midfield, Johnson would catch Jamal Edron for a slant, but he would fumble the ball near midfield where Oregon would recover. Oregon would have multiple scoring drives and all the outs could do was add a field goal. But late in the third quarter, Johnson was ready to change that as he went back to Edron yet again. Later in the drive, Johnson was looking to use his legs and would take the first down yardage. With a minute 38 left, the play fake got the Oregon defense slipping as he would hook up with Michael Antoine. With 58 seconds remaining, Johnson would leave the pocket and find Jamal Edron who would do the rest walking into the end zone and the Owls would reclaim the lead. With four minutes left, 38-42, Johnson was looking to strike yet again in his back and forth as he would find Marquise Robinson who would get the ball near the 20. After the 42 yard completion, Johnson was setting his team up with a chance to take the lead yet again as Nicosa Perry would get a first down. Johnson then would survey the field and find Dean Jr. on a laser as he ripped it to him for nine yards. The defense would do their job and give the Owls a short field yet again, but Johnson would go on to fumble his second lost fumble on the season and Oregon had a chance to do the unthinkable. Luckily, the Owls defense was able to get a stop and the victory formation was on and the championship was won. Johnson would have over 500 total yards and five touchdowns. Nobody but Johnson knew that this was his final college game. As he led the Owls to the BCS National Championship, he was ready to go to the NFL. During his combine in April, Johnson would shock everybody as he crushed the expectations set on almost every single drill. After hitting 21 reps on the weights, Johnson would come back to hit a 4-4-340. Johnson was showing just how physically gifted he was on every single drill. If he continued this, the sky was the limit to where he could be drafted. After getting ranked one in literally everything, all he had to do was hit a few passing drills. Johnson started off strong. However, after the strong start, Johnson was a little inaccurate on a few passes and it got a little shaky. On the biggest night of Jacoby's career, he sat down with Dion and his agent. Once Jacoby's phone rang, he was notified that he would become a member of the Steelers and he would be heading to Pittsburgh. To everyone's surprise, the Steelers will also go on to drive Justin McKitton. In Johnson's first action of week one of the preseason, he would take this wildcat snap for 52 yards and a walk-in touchdown. Johnson would go on to take the field one more time late in the first quarter, where he would hook up across the middle of the field to big play George Pickens. And one play later, he would find his college teammate Justin McKitton on the sideline, and that would be his final completion of this game. In week two versus the Bills, Johnson took off exactly where he left off, scrambling up the sideline, getting the ball near the 10. Him and Justin would hook up for their first career touchdowns, even though it was unofficial thanks to the preseason, but it still felt good. From the goal line, Johnson would throw a dangerous pass and it would be intercepted. In his final preseason action on 4th and 2, he would hook up with his favorite target, Justin McKitton, for the first down. Shortly after, Johnson would take off scrambling, where he would be a really evasive and powerful walking in for a touchdown. Late in the third quarter, Johnson was getting ready to get his slash drive underway, where he would hook up with Pat Fryer move and take the ball all the way to the one. Just a few plays later, Johnson would find Deontay Johnson. So it was a Johnson to Johnson connection for another touchdown. And that would conclude his preseason. His first start came against the 49ers in week one after he won the starting job with ease. He would hook up with McKitchen early, Later in the drive, as time was dwindling down, he would find McKitchen yet again. 
As time ended in the first quarter, he would find Deontay Johnson for eight yards. And just a few plays later, he would find McKinnon yet again, this time toe drag swagging near the six. After the long drive, Jalen Warren was left wide open in the flat and it was, and it was official. Jacoby Johnson's first passing touchdown. After the Steelers defense got a short field, he would uncork a missile to Deontay Johnson for another touchdown. Late in the fourth quarter, Johnson was looking to take the lead and at minimal tie the game. The pressure was getting home and the ball was almost called a fumble, but it ended up being incomplete and the Steelers would settle for a field goal. With 16 seconds left, Johnson was looking to do the unthinkable and upset this 49ers on his first game. After getting sacked, the ball came out low and Fred Warner would take the interception and the 49ers would pull off the win after they kicked the field goal to end the game. Jacoby's first win wouldn't come until week three versus the Las Vegas Raiders, where he was on the money repeatedly as he hooked up with Deontay Johnson. Later in that drive on second and one, him and McKitton would hook up for McKitton's first touchdown of the season and of his career. Johnson would be picked off by Marcus Epps who would then return the ball near the 30. After the Raiders put up seven, Johnson was out for vengeance after the interception, and he would uncork a long ball to Justin McKinnon, who would lay all the way out for it. After driving the ball to the six, Johnson had pressure at his feet, would hit a 360 spin move just to uncork a dime to Deontay Johnson. Late in the third quarter, Johnson would take off running on third and 11 to get the first down himself. With 20 seconds remaining, he would use his legs yet again, this time sliding near the first down. What looked to be a walk-in touchdown out of the Wildcat for McKinnon would be called back by holding and Steelers have to settle for a field goal. With a minute 37, they were looking to seal the deal on the Raiders. After the first down run by Jalen Warren, Johnson needed one more conversion to seal the deal and he would get the first down with his own legs. The victory formation was in and Johnson had his first career victory in the NFL. Week 12 in the NFL season, the Steelers were looking to clinch the playoffs. They started this off with a 13-yard carry to Jalen Warren. After the 13-yard carry, Johnson was in the pocket and uncorked a long ball to his favorite target, Justin McKinnon, who went over the top and mossed the defender. No one understood how he made the catch. Later in the drive, Johnson would try to use his legs and he would be knocked out of this game with a concussion and he would fumble the ball, luckily recovered by the O-line. Johnson wouldn't return until late in the third quarter with a game knotted up 10-10 and off a of play action, he was looking to find Darnell Washington who would take the ball near the 20-yard line. After the face mask, another 15 was added on and at the goal line, Johnson would take matters into his own hand even after the concussion and walk in, breaking up the tie. The victory formation would ensue after the Cardinals couldn't get a score on the board. The playoffs were clinched for the Steelers. The Steelers would get a first round bye, and in the divisional round, they would be facing up against the Ravens for the third time this season. On second and 10, Johnson would hand off to Warren, who would get the first down and a little bit more. A few plays later in the drive, he would catch Connor Hayward for his first touchdown on the season, coming in at such an opportune time in the playoffs. Johnson was blessed with a short field and to do the best of his abilities to score as he would walk in for another touchdown, putting the Steelers up two scores. Johnson was looking to put the Steelers up another score until Jadeveon Clowney had other plans, sacking him and forcing a fumble. This play would effectively put the Ravens right back in striking position as they would score and get a two-point conversion. Late in the fourth quarter, Johnson would hand off to big Najee Harris for his first carry of the day for 11 yards. Facing third and 13, Johnson would scramble and uncork a bomb that ended up being picked off by the 6'4 Kyle Hamilton. After the Ravens reclaimed the lead, Johnson would lead a long drive and would get within striking distance after this connection to Deontay Johnson got them to the four yard line. And with seven seconds remaining, he would find McKinnon wide open in the end zone who would hang on after the big hit and the Steelers would be advancing to the championship game. They would match up with the Bills and they would get into the action late in the second quarter with this bomb to Jalen Warren who would do the rest walking in for a 69 yard touchdown. Late in the second quarter, the lead still being 10 to seven, Johnson was looking to strike again as he got Pat Fryer move who beat Matt Milano all the way into the red zone. A few plays later, Johnson would utilize the scramble drill to get George Pickens wide open and he would take the ball down to the one. On the goal line, Warren would capitalize with a touchdown making the lead 17-7. Johnson would do the same thing yet again, but this time he would hook up with Warren who would take the ball to the similar spot that Pickens did the drive before. Just like that, they were looking to take a 24-7 lead. Jalen Warren would walk into the end zone yet again just before halftime. Late in the fourth quarter, the Steelers were nursing a two-score lead, and Johnson would take a read option for a first down. Johnson would hand off to Jalen Warren, who would pick up eight yards. Coach Tomlin did the unthinkable and called a fake field goal. The drive continued. On first and goal, Johnson would find McKinnon for an easy touchdown in the end zone, and the game was all but over. The Steelers would be advancing to the Super Bowl. The stage was set, 49ers and Brock Purdy versus Jacoby Johnson and the Steelers.
Johnson didn't forget that the 49ers defense was one of the only ones to give him trouble on the season. And on third and 10, Johnson would take matters into his own hand, taking this ball all the way down to the 13. Coach Tomlin would call a fake field goal and the Steelers would put up seven. However, they would start their drive off with holding, and then Javon Hargrave had other ideas as he got Johnson in the backfield for a nine yard loss. On third and forever, no one was expecting a completion but Deontay Johnson and Jacoby Johnson as the pair hooked up for a 38 yard connection. The Steelers would call up a trick play and Jalen Warren would sneak out of the backfield. He and Johnson would connect for an absolute beautiful trick play touchdown as he outran two defenders. Just before halftime, with 42 seconds remaining, Johnson was looking to put more points on the board as he connected with Pat Firemove who broke the tackle and got past midfield. A couple plays later on second and two, Johnson would try to utilize the scramble drill and he would find McKinton who would wait for the ball and complete it near the 23. The drive would lead to a field goal. On third and 15, Johnson was looking for his Johnson and Johnson connection but opted to throw the ball away. The Steelers would tack on three. With four minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, Johnson was looking to put the Niners away and he would take off using his legs getting the ball near the 30. After the big carry, Jalen Warren would follow it up with one of his own, picking up the first down yardage. As long as Johnson and the offense didn't turn the ball over, they looked like the Super Bowl was all theirs and on third and seven, Johnson decided to take the sack instead of throwing the ball in harm's way. After attacking on the field goal, the 49ers would go down and score, but it was too little too late and Jacoby had led the Steelers to an improbable Super Bowl during a Cinderella season. The celebration was on in Pittsburgh.